What's going on guys, Richard Rosa with the Personal Development Channel. Today is a guest episode. This introduction recording is actually post the time I spent with Vivek. And the reason for that was so I can tell you before you listen to it that I really enjoyed the time that we had and I personally found it thought provoking and I've actually gone away and implemented a couple of changes in my life since we spoke. And I'm going to keep you posted on that as we go. I hope you enjoyed this episode and can take away something as I have. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And if at any time you like what you see, then give it a little like. So who have I got today? I have with me Mr. Vivek Shetty, the head honcho of Indus Communications. He's been a motivational speaker and a life coach with a strong focus on yoga, life sciences and mystic knowledges for more than 15 years now. With over 500 lectures and sessions to his credit spread across leading corporate groups and management institutions, NGOs, medical and engineering colleges, international schools and various management forums. He also conducts one-to-one classes on a regular basis for mind management and voice training. Over 300 students and various professionals and celebrities are now training directly under him for mind management. He was conferred with the Midday Award for Excellence in Motivational Speaking in May 2019. If that wasn't enough, he has a profound interest in music and also is the lead vocalist of his six-member band that has performed in the leading festivals across the country in India, like Kalaguda and Mood Indigo. He has also won awards for his voice. His popular radio show, Celebrating Life with FM Rainbow, is currently on air on 107 FM and is part of the largest Akshwana radio network. His television show, CEO Talk with Vivek Shetty, was one of the most popular television shows for corporate India. And if that wasn't enough, his one-of-its-kind television show on the human mind, titled Mun Ek Kulp Ruksh, that translates to The Mind, A Wishing Tree, I really apologize if I have pronounced that wrong. I'm pretty sure I have. My Hindi is not great, but um, please correct me if I'm wrong. He strongly believes in yoga and religiously devotes himself practicing it every single day. He has contributed as a freelance writer to leading publications. I welcome the truly multifaceted Vivek Shetty. Welcome Vivek, and thank you for coming on the show today. How are you? Absolutely my pleasure, Richard. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Probably the best place to start is how did you get into the mind management piece, which is really the, you know, the bit that I'm really interested in. As you know, this is a personal development channel and we kind of dig deep into how we can give advice and help people. So yeah, tell us how you started on this journey of mind management and then we can branch off into some of these other areas. Yes, Richard. So, um, My observation of life uh, during my professional career, I had a very successful professional career as uh, the CEO of Indus Communications, which was an advertising, public relations, event management, and celebrity management firm. We still run it very successfully, Mm. and we call ourselves a 360 degrees communications agency. So I was pursuing this career very successfully, and we were going places, we were doing all the right things as far as the business model went, and we were quite successful. But I noticed something that there was a vacuum inside me. And our education system, our societal system, I'm not just talking about India, but globally, is so designed, is so designed, Richard, yeah. that no matter how many degrees you have in your resume in terms of educational qualifications, no matter what your bank balance, no matter how many mansions you own, no matter how many you know, flamboyant cars standing outside those mansions. Yeah. No matter what your relationship status, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're living in, or no matter what it is, deep down, deep down, at the innermost core, a vast majority of people, I'm repeating myself for the sake of emphasis, a vast majority, if not almost everybody, is highly unfulfilled. Okay. And restless. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I call this the restless generation. You see, and uh, there is a very scientific reason behind this restlessness. Mm -hmm. 
and this unfulfillment among people. Yeah. And it is this, the, my search for the answer to this question, why are people unfulfilled? Why are they so restless? So there is a beautiful ghazal in Hindi, you know, which I'll give you the English translation also for your benefit, yeah, please. which goes something like this. Sine mein jalan, aakho mein tufan sa kyun hai? Is shahar mein har shaks pareshan sa kyun hai? So what it translates to the following. Why is there a constant heartburn? Why is there a storm in every eye that I see? Why is everybody so restless in this city? That is the song, the lyrics of this song. Okay. And for a moment, Richard, pause and take a deep breath. And look at the world that we have created. Because if you understand the context of the world that we have created, as this interaction moves forward, you will appreciate the content a lot more. Mm -hmm. So one aspect of the context is that we have, this is a restless generation. Deep down, everybody is unfulfilled. The second aspect of the context is, and you don't need any wise man after you listen to this to tell you what kind of a world we are creating. Pause, take a deep breath and think which are the biggest industries in the world today. Easily among the top five and probably at number one is arms and ammunition. Okay. Yeah. yeah. At close number two or number three is drugs and alcohol. Easily among the top five is pharmaceuticals, probably at number three. If pharmaceuticals is at number three, Richard, I want you to understand the impact of this statistical truth. What is the impact of this statistical truth? It means we are eating more medicines than food. <laughs> this is the kind of the world that we have created. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let me assure you with complete confidence that 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years down the line, as your children and grandchildren grow up, these industries will continue to rule the roost and grow even bigger. So look at the world that we have created. Mm -hmm. You have created a plan that if the plan does not succeed, you think you're doomed. If the plan succeeds, in any case you're doomed. Either way, you're doomed unless you revisit the plan. <laughs> if you look at about 3000 years of the history of mankind, yeah. you would observe that we have fought approximately four and a half thousand wars. There are only two stages of mankind. Either we are at war or we are preparing for war. When we are Preparing for war, it is fashionably called Cold War. When we are at war, obviously the natural conclusion is it is hot war. So this is 3000 years of the history of mankind and this history will continue to repeat itself again and again and again. So this is the context of the world that we have created. Another very last important fact I would like to leave you with and that, in fact, these kind of uh, facts, this kind of context propelled me in this direction. 80% mm -hmm. of the conditions that human beings suffer from today are psychosomatic in nature. Yep. This is produced by the mind for the body. This is by the people, for the people, of the people. Mm -hmm. So if a mosquito bites somebody, and they contract malaria, that is clearly an external attack. But blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, and a host of other conditions are psychosomatic in nature, which means you produce the disease for your body with your own mind. Oh, okay. this, is, right. this is the That's context of the world that we live in. So it was my journey towards fulfillment. It was my journey to understand that why have we created such a lopsided world, which we call progression, but actually it is regression. Mm. See, human beings consider themselves to be the wisest species on the planet, 
my sincere apologies for submitting that it's not true. <laughs> okay. And I'll give you a classic example of this. Mm -hmm. What you call earthworm. You know, if there is a scenario where all the earthworms disappear tomorrow, if they disappear from the soil, any environmental scientist will tell you this, that the planet is gone in about three, four, maximum five years, the planet is gone. Because the earthworm is doing such a fantastic work on the soil to retain the earth. But again, hypothetically, if there is a scenario where all the human beings disappear tomorrow and they temporarily disappeared off the streets, at least during the COVID-19 pandemic and during the subsequent lockdown, the planet will be a better place. Mm. And I witnessed this in Mumbai because you know, the, the air was much cleaner when the human beings were off the streets. The water was much cleaner. Yeah. Everything else, Mumbai looked so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this so true? Because human beings are con conducting life only with naked ambition and zero or almost limited vision. Mm -hmm. Naked ambition means more, 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 and more. Vision means all. The earthworm is conducting life with vision. Human beings are conducting life with naked ambition and zero or limited vision. Selfish. And we have already destroyed 50% of the planet because of our ambition. We have only one planet. There are no further planets available on lease, even if we want them. By our naked ambition and limited or zero vision, we have already destroyed 50% of the planet. But we think we are doing something fantastic. See, this is the comedy of the tragedy. This is the tragic comedy. We think we are doing something fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we call it progress. Actually, it is regression. Yes? So yeah. this yeah. it is this context. It is this unfulfillment. It is this restlessness, despite all my worldly success, which got me into this domain of mind management, or what we call mindfulness you may give it any fancy terminology you choose okay. but it is basically understanding the inside because until something fabulous is happening inside nothing fabulous can happen outside wow okay I, I i completely agree with a lot of what you've just said i don't even know where i would fit into some of this either though i'd probably fit into some of the uh, the the badder side of what you're talking about but it's something i've been on a journey myself with for a long time um, personal development and understanding yourself. Um, I mean, I don't even know where to start with some of these bits that you've just mentioned. There was lots of stuff there. Um, some really interesting points as well that you've raised. One of the bits that I was quite interested in is about when you started and you said about the, um, the industries, these big industries. Yes. Um, and arms was one of them that you were talking about. Then, then you went on to the pharmaceuticals as free. And these are the ones obviously we're with, we eating more medicines than we are food um what 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 would be your i mean what do we do about it how do we tackle it something that's so huge yes so pharmaceuticals let me again uh, assert is required at a certain dimension for human well-being yeah of course i'm not ruling out pharmaceuticals totally and saying it as an industry it's not required of course it is required but you have to appreciate this aspect of human well-being, as I mentioned earlier, that 80% of the conditions that we suffer from are psychosomatic in nature. Mm -hmm. If there is a situation where there is trauma, so for example, if somebody meets with an accident, no amount of motivational speaking or pep talk by Vivek Shetty or anybody for that matter is going to help it. Yeah. He has met with an accident. It is a trauma situation. He has to go to the hospital, take the required drugs, take the required pharmaceuticals under expert supervision and do the surgery if required. That is trauma. But, you know, when you have a headache, you pop a pill. When you have a stomach ache, you pop a pill. Yeah. I want you to understand this aspect. In the good old days, you know, if a cat living in the jungle, not a domesticated cat, a cat living a natural life in the jungle, had a stomach ache, it would go and pick up the right herb from the jungle and eat that herb. Within 24 hours, the mm. stomach ache would be resolved. Yeah. 
okay we pop a pill that makes up makes us susceptible to a condition eventually popping pills see today popping pills has become almost like you know part of life yeah it might interest you to know richard i haven't taken a pill for the last 9 years of my life for any reason whatsoever mm -hmm. i haven't taken a pill i do what we call is quantum healing okay mm -hmm. so now if you have a headache you pop a pill if you have a stomach ache you pop a pill popping 3 4 5 pills a week has become routine who made this routine the pharmaceutical industry with their marketing yeah okay and you have just you know taken those messages without really going into the depth and understanding of human well being because of this in about 6 to 1 months time in one year's time sorry 6 months to one year time eventually you will have a condition called adr adverse drug reaction mm -hmm. because of regular popping of pills you were not a patient but you became a patient yeah you were not ill but you became ill what is the secret of success of the pharmaceutical industry suppose if richard is a very healthy person he at the most goes to the gym <coughs> takes a few health supplements or whatever mm -hmm. there is little money in health god forbid if somebody dies on the hospital bed, bed that is the last bill they pay <coughs> so there is also very little money in death mm. there is little money in health there is little money in death there is only money in illness so the primary strategy of the pharmaceutical industry is to prolong your life but to keep you ill yeah see so a pain yeah the medicine yes they will prolong your life they won't let you die but they'll keep you ill they won't focus on prevention at all <coughs> sorry that's okay It's quite interesting. I've never really, I've, I've never even thought of anything like this um, in, about yes. the pharmaceutical so, industry. If I tell tomorrow I have a drug that will cure cancer, suppose if I announce, yeah, yeah, and I'll say I've done all the clinical trials, and you know there'll be about hundred investors queuing up at my door store, at my sorry doorstep, willing to invest in me. But if I tell them I have a technique which will prevent cancer, not too many people will be willing to talk to me. Mm. because there's not too much money in prevention <clears throat> there's only money in illness so they want people to have cancer first and then create a drug which will cure cancer yeah this is the secret of the pharma industry so my message is the next time you have a headache this is a tip for your listeners <laughs> this is a tip for all your uh, viewers yeah try this and Hold me responsible if it doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I love so, it. <clears throat> yeah. So, what's the tip? The next time you have a headache, what you need to do is something very simple. Unless it's a case of you know extreme migraine or something like that, that's a different issue. Yeah. But if it's a normal headache due to stress, strain, and your routine lifestyle, you know where there's a lot of pressure on you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. try this. Breathe in with your left nostril. only your left nostril for about 5 minutes inhale and exhale so it's like this you close your right nostril okay you do this for about 3 to 5 minutes why right, okay after that and while you're doing this it's important to close your eyes i kept my eyes open because we're in the in a recording yeah. but otherwise please close your eyes okay? okay and after you do this for another 30 seconds to 1 minute take any uh, finger of yours preferably the thumb hold it to this point the set the point which is between your two eyebrows your forehead mm -hmm. and hold this for about 30 seconds to a minute again mm -hmm. just close your eyes and hold it while you are doing both these exercises it is important to tell yourself that you know the headache is gone it's nothing it will go it has to go you have to give yourself this thought while doing both these exercises 3 minutes you do the breathing in and out only through the left nostril and for another 30 seconds to 1 minute you hold this with a little pressure on your forehead close your eyes in both the cases and keep telling yourself 
the headache is nothing it's gone it will go in the next 3 minutes and trust me in 3 to 5 minutes your headache would be gone you don't okay. need a pill i'm i'll be i'll I'll be the first one to try it out as soon as as soon as I've get a headache. I don't suffer from headaches too much, but that's uh try this. And okay. believe me, the proof of Thank the pudding you. is in the eating. So I haven't taken a pill for a headache for nine years. Mm -hmm. Earlier, even I used to pop pills. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But once I get into uh, got into the science of human well-being, I realized this is a very dangerous proposition. Mm. I who gave us the concept of sleeping for eight hours? <laughs> the sleeping pill industry. They sold this concept to us. So what happens? Suppose if tomorrow Richard sleeps and he sleeps only for six hours and he gets up, because this concept has been ingrained in your mind, you start telling yourself, "Oh, I have slept only for six hours. Something is wrong with me. I'm not sleeping well." Actually, nothing was wrong with you. But when you start telling yourself this, that something is wrong with me, eventually something goes wrong with you. I have been sleeping only for four or five hours for the last ten years of my life. I wake up perfectly healthy. I am as fresh as anybody. You can't say I've slept for only four or five hours. Yeah. Because if you know how to maintain this body, you can function with minimum rest. Mm -hmm. And if you sleep for eight hours, let me give you the other calculation of it. Suppose if you lived sixty years and you're sleeping for eight hours every day. Effectively, you slept for twenty years. Mm. One third of a day you're sleeping, which means for twenty years you slept. You lived only forty years. I want to ask everybody a question: Is life about being awake or going to sleep? In deep sleep, you don't even know you exist, let alone the world around you exists. So, is that life? Life is about being awake with as much attention, focus, alertness, and awareness as you possibly can. it's not about going to sleep so you must manage the system in such a way that sleep is only part of rest a little bit of rest is surely required you can manage yourself in such a way that with 4 hours 5 hours sometimes even 3 hours you will be well rested yeah and you will get up absolutely fresh mm -hmm. you should know how to drive the system so all these things of you know sleeping for 8 hours have been sold by the sleeping pill industry which again is part of the pharmaceutical industry yeah so when you ask me how can we correct this we need to correct this in this fashion first and foremost don't keep get, get out of the habit of popping pills yeah and get into quantum healing 80% of the conditions that you suffer from can be addressed by quantum healing i want to share with you an experiment which happened in the west where you come from mm -hmm. yeah Okay, this is a real life experiment and a real life study which happened. We are talking of very simple things like a headache or a stomach ache. I'll take you to something as serious as a heart condition, where doctors have recommended bypass surgery. Okay. Okay. So they identified 500 people who had a heart condition, and they said the solution to this is bypass surgery. Now, this is the interesting part of the experiment, Richard. Listen to this carefully. they segregated the finder people into two groups of 250 each one was called group a the other was called group b in group a they did the routine things with them which means all the precautions that are required before a bypass bypass surgery were taken one by one they were taken into different operation theaters they were given anesthesia and eventually the surgery was performed Yep. After the surgery was performed, they were given all the prescriptions in terms of diet, exercise, other guidelines to recover, mm -hmm. and they were sent home. This is what happened in Group A. Now listen to what happened in Group B. They took the families of those patients into confidence, and they did what we call is a placebo surgery. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. They told them we are going to perform surgery on you. on you you need bypass surgery they took all of them one by one like they would routinely do in a normal case into the theater they gave them anesthesia put them to sleep for a few hours made a few incisions here and there so that when they wake up they feel some surgery happened actually they performed no surgery mm -hmm. they did not perform any surgery on them and after they woke up they told them only one thing 
your surgery was fantastic you can now lead a normal life you have no heart problem mm -hmm. it's over over and out and you can go and lead a normal life this is what they told every single patient very strongly so the patient in group all the patients in group b go home with this thought that everything is fine there's no problem in my heart i'm just normal it's over they monitored the patients in both the groups for two years now here are the interesting findings which are path breaking revelations in group a some patients develop complications in six months some other patients have another 30 percent of them develop complications in a year a few more develop complications in two years they even turned diabetic yeah because to lower cholesterol you are given something called statins now once you start consuming statins easily in about a year or two you should become diabetic incidentally india is producing 15 million diabetics every year this way by giving statins okay mm -hmm. in group b they monitored the patients for six months no complications one year no complications two year no complications at all with a single patient yeah what happened quantum healing happened the patients healed themselves yeah there was no surgery performed on them your health is in your hands richard mm -hmm. not in the hands of the doctor mm -hmm. your health is in your hands you can prevent the diseases from entering first yeah the doctor is required for trauma the doctor is required for chronic conditions not for you know psychosomatic conditions those are manufactured by you for yourself you are your best doctor your health yeah. is in your hands yeah i agree with a lot of what you say the only bits that i'd be confused about is how do we know what's psychomatic and what's not or so psychosomatic again, what how do we how would i know or anybody else know what's psychosomatic and what's not or how do you mean like headaches i, I think I, I you know i i do headaches do i know I'm normally from stress and things like that so i believe that some of the other bits, I don't know how, how would you know? So you've gone to the root world, what is stress? Now, why do you first manufacture stress? Yeah. And then create a huge subject out of stress management. And a whole industry is created out of stress management. <laughs> and people are making billions of dollars out of stress management. Yeah. My question is, who created stress? You. Mm -hmm. You created stress. Yeah. For myself do you want to yeah do you want to cons continue manufacturing stress or do you want to stop manufacturing stress obviously you want to stop manufacturing stress so you have to understand where this comes from if i have to give you a one-line definition of stress stress is only when your awareness is not in the present moment only when you stop living in the now you can create stress if you're living in the now there is no way of creating stress 99.9% .9 of the times if not almost 100% of the times the human mind is in one of the two faculties it is either in memory which means the past or it is in imagination which means the future it is rarely in the moment mm. life is giving you a profound message with every breath if i don't take the next breath it is certainly death if I don't leave this breath, it is certainly death. There is no other way to be but to be in the moment. But human beings have manipulated themselves in so many different ways that they think there are many other ways to be. Yeah. Every breath is giving you a profound message that there is no other way to be but to be in the moment. So we are victims of our own manipulation. And with this manipulation, you sow the primary seeds of stress. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you must stop this manipulation. This moment is life. So I want to tell you a brilliant story, a beautiful story, sorry, yeah. of three brilliant space scientists. Now, they were brilliant geniuses in their own right in their fields. Okay? Yeah. One fine day, they were waiting at a railway platform. They had to take a train from point A to point B. And they were discussing some future space project of theirs which was to take off in six months. 
So they were engrossed in a very serious discussion. Suddenly, the train came. The train came. And two of them managed to board the train. One of them unfortunately got left behind. The gentleman who was left behind was a little downcast, was a little dejected. So another passenger who happened to be on the same railway platform walks up to this space scientist, to this genius, and asks him, Sir, why are you looking so down? What's the problem? So he tells him, I missed my train. He says, don't worry. In about 20 minutes, there'll be another train on the platform. You can take that train and head wherever you're supposed to go. Hmm. He says, that is not the problem. Then he says, what is the problem? He says, my two friends have already boarded the train. So he says, okay, chill. There's nothing to worry. You see, you can always ask them to wait for you at the next station and take the next train and catch up with them there. Nothing to worry. Don't get so agitated. He says, that is also not the problem. Now this man is a little perplexed, a little, you know, irritated. So he finally asks him, what then is the problem, sir? He tells him, those two friends of mine who have boarded the train had actually come to see me off. Now they are in the train and I am here. What happened? Three brilliant space scientists who were geniuses in their field, but they missed the moment. Every moment is a moment of infinite possibilities provided you're in the moment. Mm -hmm. Every moment has the solution to every problem provided you're in the moment. Mm. So the first thing that you need to do is stop manufacturing stress, which means you have to, whenever a thought knocks at your door, how do you conduct this practically? When a thought knocks at your door, it is like somebody, you know, knocks in your... Uh, comes to your mind, it is like somebody knocking the door. Richard can open the door, do a salsa and a samba with that person, if she's a beautiful girl. <laughs> you know, have some nice wine with her, have dinner with her, and do a lot of things with that beautiful girl who's knocking at the door. <laughs> or, Richard can simply tell her, you keep knocking, I won't open the door. Yeah. So when a thought comes to your mind, you have to follow a simple technique. Is this thought about the future? Then let him keep knocking. Is this thought about the past? Let her keep knocking. I won't attend to her. Is this about the present? Of course, I will address it. I will address it here and now. Mm -hmm. Eventually, your mind gets programmed. Your subconscious mind gets programmed to attend only to the present. Once you're attending only to the present, chances are you will be joyful and exuberant every single moment because you will appreciate that life is there in you. You are breathing. You have woken up in the morning and, you know, maybe 10 lakh people have already died due to various reasons. Yeah. You have woken up. You are still breathing. Life is the greatest gift. You will appreciate this. You will be joyful and exuberant. Everything else can be attended to. Everything else can be addressed. But this moment is life. Wow. Okay. I, <clears throat> I've never really, I've never... Like I, I am in, I feel like I'm in the moment sometimes. I'm not going to speak on behalf of myself because I don't know about everybody else. Um, but I, I would say, I think at the beginning, before we started recording, I said about the, the yogi piece that I'm, I kind of, something I've been looking into that I've not started yet. And um, I know I've, I've briefly started doing a little bit of meditation. I don't do lots of it. It's something I've, 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 I've told other people to try it before. Um, but I never really got involved myself. And I feel like the meditation piece almost fits in a little bit. It helps with you being in the moment and helps you set your day up and you know, whatever time of the day you decide to do it. Um, but yeah, there are times when I feel like I'm not in the moment. I know, I know, I know I'm not in the moment all the time. And I know that I'm not the only one that feels like that. But yeah, there'll be times where I, I can get myself in the moment. I feel like I'm pretty good at being in the moment as an individual. But I know there's times where I won't be. So how, how, do I, how do I keep myself in mind? I know you've given some tips there as well. There is the conscious mind and there is the subconscious mind. Yeah. The conscious mind, for example, now Richard, through his conscious mind, says, I want to be in the moment. Yeah. Okay? Now, just like a computer has got hardware and software, okay? Mm -hmm. the soft, what is the software? The software are the programs you've downloaded. Mm. 
Okay. Yep. So suppose if Rich, I want to do a nice painting on a computer. I have to first download a software which helps me do the painting. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the hardware, which means to my computer, access the software which helps me do the painting. Suppose if it is paint brush, it's a software called paint brush. I go to my computer, access paint brush, and then start doing the painting. Okay? Yeah. You'll be surprised to know you are on autopilot most of the times. Why you can't do it is because you're on autopilot. 95%, if not 99% of your decisions are taken by your subconscious mind because of the programs you've downloaded over so many years. Yeah. Those softwares are installed in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So Richard says, I want to be in the moment. Okay. Good thinking. <laughs> Fantastic. Now for execution, where do you have to go? You have to access the subconscious conscious mind, which stores all your programs and softwares. Mm -hmm. And when Richard goes to the subconscious mind and accesses the programs, he saying, sees there's not a single program which says be in the now. All the programs are, you know, oh my God, why this is not happening? Oh my God, you better take care of yourself. Otherwise, five years down the line, it's havoc. Oh my God, your company has got this program six months down the line. What are you doing about it? How do you execute the command when you don't have the software that supports the execution of the command of the conscious mind? So I'll give you an example how a child is brought up. Okay. <laughs> he comes to his parents. He's failed in an exam. Okay. Now, the typical reaction of parents in India may be something like this. You are a good for nothing. I told you. Regularly study, focus, concentrate, stop playing so much, stop jumping around so much, stop fooling around so much, stop the late night parties, but you are a good for nothing. You will not listen to anything. You will never succeed in life. Mm -hmm. You will always be a failure. This is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, the child grows up, he gets a job somewhere, and he wants to excel in that job, go up the ladder, corporate ladder very quickly. So he says now with his conscious mind, I want to excel. I want to be in a top position. He goes back to his subconscious. He goes to the programs which he has downloaded in his subconscious mind. And he finds the program says, you are good for nothing. You will never succeed. You have always been a failure. With these softwares, how can he execute success in the corporate world? Yeah. So the, first thing, yeah. the first thing that you need to do is... Delete all the previous softwares and install new softwares. You, you'll be surprised, no, Richard. I have people in my meditation in my sessions who are 55 years old, 60 years old. They are chairmen and CEOs of companies. Okay? Yeah. They're doing very well professionally. They cannot sit on one place, in one place, sorry, with their eyes closed for five minutes. You know why? The reason is this. They have practiced restlessness for 30, 40 long years. Whatever you practice, you will become damn good at it. So be careful of what you practice. Mm -hmm. So they have been jumping around here, there, phone calls, laptops, gadgets, this, that. Ha, who, ha, who, ha. <laughs> and then a gentleman called Vivek Shetty comes into their life and tells them, now sit quietly for five minutes with your eyes closed. They, some of them have run away from my sessions. I had to use another technique to get them into meditation. They have literally run away. Mm -hmm. They can't sit with their eyes closed for five minutes. Then I changed my technique with them. I realized this technique will not work. So no one meditation technique works for anybody. Yeah. Everybody, sorry. One standard technique of meditation doesn't work for everybody. I have to see your what, what space you're coming from. Yeah. I have to use different techniques with different people. So certain people, if you tell them, sit with your eyes closed for five minutes, 10 minutes, they just can't do it. But gradually, six months down the line, that same CEO is now sitting in one place for 15 minutes with his eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Six months down the line. What did we do with him? We first uninstalled all the softwares he has downloaded. We installed fresh softwares. And now when he gives a command, I want to be in the now. I want to be fulfilled. I want to be graceful. I want to be joyous. There are programs in his subconscious mind 
there are softwares in the subconscious mind which support the execution of these commands yeah so when he gives the command and goes to his uh, softwares to access which software to use to execute this command those softwares have been installed that is when you will be able to execute it otherwise this is exactly what will happen you, your conscious mind will want to do many things you will not be able to execute it mm -hmm. as you as we are speaking richard who has given the command for your body to be at the right temperature to conduct this interaction with me <laughs> my and if you can if you can just give yourself a command and tell i want to change my body temperature can it change it can't your subconscious mind has given the command mm -hmm. as we speak who has given the command for your blood to flow through the veins in the right speed so that you are healthy hale and hearty mm -hmm. give a command right now as we are speaking and tell yeah. yourself tell your blood to slow down the speed mm -hmm. you can't suppose i'll give you more practical examples you like what do you like to eat what do you like to eat oh, something I, that you like any any um, missile power there you go a maharashtrian dish okay missile power missile power okay. suppose if you like missile power okay yep. then i tell you i tell you now richard stop liking missile power give yourself a command mm -hmm. you give yourself a command it's not going to be executed no can you stop liking missile power from tomorrow no well, no, I, I, there are, no, there no, are, I can't, no. There are no, big cricket and football fans who watched cricket for so many years, who watched football for so many years, who played cricket, who played football. Even in their busy schedules in the office, if they get five minutes, they'll go and watch the score. Mm -hmm. Tell them to give a command to stop liking football and cricket from tomorrow. And tell them to execute the command. Can they do it? No. Because you're already programmed. Mm -hmm. You have... 95 to 99 percent of your decisions you are actually on autopilot yeah free will is an illusion in a certain sense mm. we say free will free will it's my free will it's my freedom of expression this is actually an illusion when it comes to execution because you are more more often than not you're on autopilot yeah uh, i agree agree 100 percent um, I, I, I studied, or I, I say study, but I, um, I did NLP about, I don't know, nine, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, maybe eight, eight, 10 years ago I did it. And I, 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 have, I don't practice as much as I used to, um, but I do a little bit now. Um, and I did a lot of it as I finished my NLP training and my hypnotherapy and the timeline therapy, they're the things that I did. I practiced it a lot after post my training. Then I kind of stopped, stopped doing it. Um, but a lot of some of the some of the things that you're talking about right there as well, the reprogramming of the mind, and um, you know, reducing negative thoughts, and then putting new thoughts in inside um, a subconscious on and and conscious um, is very similar to that as well. What you said. Have you heard of NLP? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But I do from what from and I don't know loads about it as I've said. The meditation bit, and it's quite funny that what you're saying about that, the, about some of the CEOs and some of the guys that you're coaching and mentoring and supporting, I'd, I'd probably put myself in that bracket with the, I, I'm, I'm, I've had a couple of friends mention it to me about meditating, and they've given me a couple of ways that they do it, um, and I quite like the sound of it, and I was like, yep, I, I'm, I'm going to try that, and then I've gone to try it, but I try it really late at night when I'm knackered and exhausted. I don't, I'm in front of my computer, I'm working, I'm on the phone or whatever it is I'm doing. I'll go into my bedroom and then I'll be right, okay, I'm going to do some meditation. It's late at night, I'm exhausted anyway. And then I kind of, I, I, I sometimes don't do it when I say I'm going to do it. Or I'll do it and I'll be one of them where it's like two minutes, three minutes, but like, and then I just the, go to bed. The very fact that it is exhausting for you, the very fact that you have to exercise control, means it's not the right meditation technique for you at all mm -hmm. meditation means you evolve you don't have to control yourself yeah you evolve into a space controlling means it will be a tough thing you will hate it <laughs> if it's about control you're going to hate it from the bottom of your heart it's going to be like you know a school teacher trying us trying to get a small boy to sit in one place and study 
and force him to study. And he wants to go there out and play. <laughs> so there are very few people who know meditation in its true depth in terms of technique and in terms of practice and in terms of identifying the right technique for the right person. Mm -hmm. What happens in meditation packages is a standard rollout. 30 people sitting in one room, everybody is doing the same thing. Everybody has come from a different space. Yeah. Everybody is a different human being. They have different set of experiences. They have different set of problems. You give them one standard formula and tell this will work equally for everybody. That's a big joke. Standardization when it comes to diet. Now all these dietitians give you the same things and say these are the same things which will work for everybody. The yeah. same amount of protein, the same amount of carbs, the same amount of this. This standardization is a big joke. It's a big joke. It's just an industry. Mm -hmm. The people who are selling those packages make money. It does nothing for the person who's, you know, subscribing to those packages. Yeah. Yeah. The first and foremost thing, fundamental thing about meditation is you have to evolve into a meditative state. I can be speaking to you and I may be meditating. I'm speaking to you, but if my body is in a state of restfulness, I am meditating. I am not anxious. I am not angry. You may ask me any type of question. It will not rattle me. I am in a state of restfulness. I am in a meditative state. Yeah. Even when I am speaking to you. Otherwise, this flow of words won't come. This energy won't come. Mm -hmm. You will see a person who is rattled. So we are doing a one and a half hour interaction, Richard. Mm -hmm. I do sessions for three, three days. I go without a single piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Or a single point jotted. Nothing at all. One fine day, a television anchor asked me, she was part of one of the sessions. Yeah. And she was part of the question and answer session. And she saw all sorts of questions coming from all sorts of people from all different, different domains and areas. And I was giving them spontaneous answers, which more than satisfied them. She observed that. So she came with a question. What kind of preparation does it take when you come for interactions like this? So I told her, if I'm living the subject, I need little or practically no preparation. Little to the extent that if there is a specific brief given by a client that this is the aspects he wants to get addressed, I have to just map my route. Okay, I'll take this route. That's it. If I'm not living the subject, I'm an actor who's pretending to be something which he is not. Yeah. I have, my script has to be carefully prepared. Every expression has to be carefully prepared. Every thought has to be carefully prepared. One word goes here and there, I'm gone. One expression goes here and there, I'm gone. I could be gone any moment, any time. Mm -hmm. Because I'm an actor who's pretending to be something which he is not. Yeah. But I'm living the subject every single day. Mm -hmm. Morning 4.30, my meditation starts. Till I go to bed. I, try, I am mostly in a meditative state. Mm. So I you get access to many other things which other people will not get access to. Because in meditation, you get access to what we call cosmic wisdom or cosmic intelligence. Okay. So to give you an example, Dr. Annie Besant, in her book, Occult Chemistry, you can Google and check this out. Yeah. Stated, when I sit in states of yogic siddhi, Siddhi is the word for, you know, focus, meditation, concentration in, uh, in, in Indian language. So when she sits in states of yogic meditation, she said, I can see that the space inside the atom is totally empty. Quantum mechanics and, you know, people who are pra practicing quantum physics have recently confirmed that the space inside the atom 99.9999999% percent of the space is empty space. Yeah. Yeah. There are protons, neutrons, and electrons, but 99.999% percent of the space is empty space. They have confirmed it recently in quantum physics and quantum mechanics. She said this in 1921 in her book, Occult Chemistry. How did she know this? when they didn't even have a single scientific instrument to measure anything at all. In the last 50 years, we have sent scientists to space, clicked pictures of the earth and found out that the earth is round. Mm -hmm. 
if you go back to pictures of ancient india which are 500000 years old one of the gods which is worshiped in india as per you know hindu mythology yeah is lord vishnu vishnu yeah yeah, yeah. so when lord vishnu comes in the varha avatar what the varha avatar is the avatar of a wild boar okay yeah. as per this as per the story he is seen rescuing the earth from drowning by literally carrying the earth on his nose the wild boar is lifting the earth on its nose literally and carrying the earth upwards and you will be surprised to know richard in those pictures which are still available as scientific evidence which are 500000 years they have shown the earth is round how did they know 500000 years ago that the earth was round and incidentally geography was named bhugol by indians the subject geography was called bhugol means bhu means studying something which is round gol means round bhugol bhugol b u g o l bhugol bhugol yeah okay and earth was called jagat jagat means that which has got speed gati jisko gati hoti hai usko jagat bolte hain that which has got speed is called jagat jagat means they already knew the earth is rotating and revolving around the sun 1000 years ago yeah how how <laughs> this happens meditation. only in states of meditation <clears throat> you get access to cosmic intelligence or cosmic wisdom mm -hmm. so in my office sometimes something very uh, uh, you know uh, uh, remarkable happens in the sense one of my uh, you know colleagues tells me sir i want to talk to you something can i come into your cabin so i tell him okay you come in 5 minutes he or she comes in 5 minutes and i tell them please sit down relax they sit down they relax i write down on a piece of paper what they are going to ask me okay i keep a book over it then i tell them please ask me what do you want to ask me they ask me something i open the book remove the book i show them the paper what they want to ask me and what i have written on the paper so far at least has been exactly the same so they have a big broad smile on their face and they ask me sir is this magic i tell them no it's not magic you have been in front of me for about 4 or 5 hours <clears throat> when you are in front of me for 4 or 5 hours i can see your energy movements mm -hmm. your the way your energy is flowing determines your emotion emotion is nothing if you split the e and the motion it is energy in motion yep yep if i know your emotion i know your feeling if i know your feeling i know your thought if i know your thought more often than not i'll be able to guess what your action will be mm -hmm. so what richard thinks depends on what richard feels sorry what richard does depends on what richard thinks what richard thinks depends on what richard feels what richard feels depends on the emotion prevailing within his body at this moment emotion is nothing but energy in motion yeah and what does emotion depend on emotion depends on the data streaming that's happening around you the energy sorry depends on the data streaming happening around you what is data streaming i am speaking to richard richard is listening to me you are trying to analyze what i am trying to tell you yeah this analysis will create data streaming mm -hmm. this data streaming will create energy flow this energy flow will create emotion this emotion will create feeling this feeling will create thought that thought will result in action mm -hmm. so when we get into meditation we get into the energy layers if you want to transform life most people are operating life at the fundamental two layers on the top which is thought and action when you operate at the thought and action layers of life small changes can happen no major transformation can happen mm. when you operate at the energy layers and the data streaming layers major transformation can happen we have to understand the difference between change and transformation most people mistake change for transformation mm -hmm. what is change and what is transformation a tree gets new leaves the old ones wear out that is change a tree gets new fruits the old ones wear out that is change 
But suppose if I change the soil, where there is an apple tree, there can be a banyan tree. Where there is a banyan tree, there can be a mango tree. Where there is a mango tree, there can be another tree. There is no residue of the past. It's a whole new life. Yeah. So I tell certain friends of mine, you know, who are college friends, a certain Vivek Shetty whom you knew 20 years ago died. The body is the same, but it's a new life inside the same body. Why? Because my energy layers have changed. My soil has changed. I don't do many things which the same Vivek Shetty used to do 20 years ago. Okay. Okay. So this is this. All right. Yeah. So we, once the energy ch layers change, the way you think, the way you act, everything has to change. It is a scientific process. Yeah. It is a scientific process. Mm -hmm. And we do that with our meditation techniques. We help people erase their previous programs, install new programs, get into their energy layers, and, you know, they start changing. Because many things which they were doing earlier, Richard himself will not feel like doing those things anymore. So there was a man who went to a wise man in a village. I love Indian villages, so I always give example of villages far away from the cities. Mm -hmm. So there was a wise man in a village and one day, one fine day, a man comes to him with a problem. He tells him, sir, I want to transform my life. He says, what's the problem? He says, you know, I am fairly successful professionally, but I drink every day. And, you know, it's once I start drinking, it's like a full Monty. I have to do it. I have to do the whole course. You know, I can't stop midway. You know, so he says, okay, continue drinking. What else is the problem? He says, you know, I have a beautiful wife at home. But the moment I see a beautiful woman, I have to, you know, get into my elements. And, you know, I try to win her over. And then, you know, it's another relationship in place. Yeah. And, you know, that creates a lot of complications and problems in family life and so many other problems. He says, continue doing that. What else is your problem? So he tells, you know, I am fond of, you know, the lure of quick money. So I, every weekend, if not every second day, I have to gamble. Though I've lost, you know, a lot of money in gambling, I still feel one day I'm going to make it big and recover all that money that I've lost and a lot more. So I continue gambling. So he says, continue. Now this man is a little puzzled. He tells him, if I have to continue doing everything that I'm doing, why the hell have I come to you for? What are you going to do? So the wise man tells him, you have to give me 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening. Those 15 minutes, whatever I tell you to do, you have to do with complete honesty. That is the only thing you owe me. After that, all this, all your problems will get solved. Mm -hmm. He's, this man starts bursts out laughing. He says, what the hell are you talking about? You see, I've been to rehab centers. I have done so many other things. They hide bottles from you. They stop you from going here, going there. This works for a 15 days or a month. Two months later, I'm back to the normal routine. This is not going to help. So he says, and you're telling 15 minutes and 15 minutes. What are 15 minutes going to do? So he tells him. The fire that cooks your food in your house can also burn your house. All that I need to do is change the direction. It's the same fire when it is going vertical towards the container, it cooks the food. If I turn the direction this way to, to some other place, it can burn your house. The fire is the same. What have I done? I've changed the direction of the energy flow. Mm -hmm. In those 15 minutes, I am going to change the direction of your energy flow. Once I change the direction of the energy flow, you don't need anybody to watch over you. All the things that you're doing now, you no longer feel like doing them yourself. Yeah. You no longer feel like drinking. You no longer feel like womanizing. You no longer feel like gambling. In about a couple of months, you'll be sorted. One month to two months, you have to do these exercises every day. Gradually, your interest in all these things will start diminishing. Mm -hmm. Because the direction of the energy flow has now changed. Once the direction of the energy flow changes, automatically your thinking and action has to change. I've given you the sequence already. How energy affects emotion, emotion affects feeling, feeling affects thought, thought affects action. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. 
Would you, is there anybody that you've ever worked with that would, that's, I suppose, been a challenge um, in, cha- in changing and evolving and Absolutely. especially someone that's come to you as well? I've had people with addictions. Mm. Unfortunately, we can't reveal their names in open program. No, no, like I've, this. no yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, not expect. I've anything. had people, Richard, with depression. Mm. About seven cases so far with depression, where the doctor told them two pills every day for a lifetime. Yeah. In about six months to a year, they are off the pills. Mm-hmm. See, an unhealthy mind first needs the company of a healthy mind. It does not need pills. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can again Google and check out this story. <clears throat> there was this doctor by the name Dr. Wilder Penfield. Wilder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly, he was a Canadian American neurosurgeon. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, and he was a, a doctor, a surgeon. I'm not too sure whether he was a neurosurgeon, but he was a surgeon for sure. Okay, of Canadian American origin. He, uh, in his time, made a statement that the mind is in the brain. The mind is in the brain. He got almost every award for that thesis. Okay. In his time, every possible award. Yeah. You can Google and check this out. Yeah. Okay. Many years later, just one year before his death, mm-hmm. he wrote an apology note. He said, my thesis was wrong. The mind is not in the brain. More often than not, the medicines that are given are given for the brain. The problem is in the mind. Mm. The pills are given for your brain. They affect your brain. The problem is in the mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, after you consume those pills for some time, you will be an ideal candidate for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and all sorts of such related conditions. Dementia, Mm -hmm. you will be a perfect candidate. Eventually, if you start consuming those pills, which they give you. All right. Now, the mind is not in the brain. Traditional Indian wisdom knew this thousand years ago again. But this is the joke of science to a certain level. Mm-hmm. What is the other joke of science in the education system? I'll give you a simple practical example. Richard is watching a sunflower. Richard is watching a sunflower. Okay. There is an observer. By the name Richard, there is an observed that is the sunflower. So Richard can say, I am watching the sunflower. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the two points of reference? The sunflower and Richard. Richard is I, in this case, you. Correct? Yeah. Now, the entire joke of the system is, whatever your description of the sunflower, whatever your experience of the sunflower is relative to you. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's the I. They never teach you who's the I. You don't even, for 50 years, 60 years of your life, you grow up, you don't know who's the I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you are interpreting the sunflower and your entire thesis and experience is based on that description and one point of reference you don't even know. And your entire experience is with, relative to that point of reference. So the education system does not teach you who is the I. Mm -hmm. I am studying rocket science. Who is the I? I am studying nuclear physics. Who is the I? <laughs> so the entire training system is a big joke in a certain sense. Yeah. Because yeah. one point of reference, you don't even know what is that point of reference. Are you body? Who is the I? Are you mind? Who are you? Are you a combination of mind and body? Who are you? And without knowing the I, your entire learning is a joke. That's very that interesting. Yeah, that's very, that is why people are unfulfilled. Yeah. That is why, as I said in the beginning, no matter how many degrees you have, no matter what your bank balance, no matter how many awards you got, no matter you know what your relationship status, deep down in your innermost core, everybody is unfulfilled and restless 
because the eye is hanging in the air. The eye is hanging in the air all the time. <laughs> Any wind can blow it anyway. So when the eye is hanging, <coughs> sorry, when the eye is hanging, it is like, you know, the horse and the cart. You don't know the horse. You are busy decorating the cart with diamonds, with awards, with money, with bungalows, with mansions. You're decorating the cart. You've forgotten the horse. And it is the horse which has to pull the cart. It's a big joke. This is the fallacy of the education system. This is the fallacy of societal system everywhere, not just in India. No. Globally, this yeah. is the problem. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting that uh, whether you, when you, you're talking about the educational system, and, and it's because a recent, like, you, you might have seen it yourself if you look online, or, and I know other people would have seen it, but there's a, few, um, there's a few speakers around that talk about the educational system and how it's wrong, but they normally talk about um, it's wrong because they don't teach us at school, wherever we're in India or, or anywhere else in Europe or America, wherever we are, they don't teach us how to manage money. And they don't teach us um, how to deal with money and how to save money and how to use it. Um, and they don't tell us how to make money as well. They just tell us, okay, well, these are the jobs available. Um, but one, I've never, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say about um, what they don't teach us in the educational system is about, they don't teach you about how to understand yourself, I. As in, in the way that you're, you're explaining it. And that's quite interesting. And um, I, yeah, I've never even thought of it myself in terms of that sense. And uh, I quite like that. Yeah. And when you get to meditation, you first come to know who is the I. Yeah. So every other experience of yours becomes a profound, relevant experience in holistic understanding of the universe. Yeah. It is not a perception of the relative field where you don't know one, uh, you know, uh, point, reference point, you're not even aware of what it is. And you're constantly making observations from that reference point without knowing what is that point. Mm. For example, you know, when you wake up, suppose Richard had a dream last night. When you wake up, you realize the dream was not real. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. While you're in the dream, you feel it's real, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I have very vivid dreams, lucid dreams, I'd say. Yes. Yes. Mm. How do you know that this life is real? After you're gone, you probably realize even this was just another experience. When you are out of it, you come to know it was not real. Mm. How do you know this is not an illusion? I don't know. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. So that is, that is the important part. Only when you come out of it, you realize that that was not, that was just, you know, a play. Mm -hmm. You were really not, you same here. Once you cross life, you probably realize this was also an illusion. Mm -hmm. This is a stage. Everybody's playing a role. Mm -hmm. It is also part of a larger illusion. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can feel and touch and experience is part of an illusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything that you cannot see and you cannot feel and you cannot touch, you can only experience is real. That's quite interesting. I, I, I don't know what I think about it. I don't know. I, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm not, I was born, I was raised um, Catholic um, back in the UK. My family are, are, are I suppose, Catholics and, and I, religious, but don't practice religion. Um, but I think as I've grown older, I've kind of moved away from religion personally. I don't really, but I don't, I don't really think I believe what well, I don't, I'll tell you how I explain it. I don't believe I don't, what I know, I don't know what's there. I believe I'm, I'm one of these guys that believe it when I see it. And it's probably almost opposite to what you just explained really. But yeah, I religion, that's kind religion of, would be the wrong terminology to describe this spiritual, the right? Spirituality. Yeah. And spirituality, you know, people normally associate with God and other, all these other things. No, spirituality is the best version of yourself to conduct this life in the most practical manner. Yeah. Yeah. It is not a philosophy. It is not something esoteric. Mm -hmm. It is the most practical way of going through this phase. Yeah. What we call life. Yeah. You know, and when you get into meditation again, as I said, you get access to so many other things 
which your sensory organs cannot experience in the normal course. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for example, <clears throat> our ears are designed to listen to sound between a certain frequency. Mm. Say for example, 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. Example. Yeah. 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 Does that mean there is no sound beyond that frequency? No, there is. Yeah. Now this is where we say there is existence beyond your perceived existence. Mm -hmm. There is existence beyond your perceived existence. Whatever you are experiencing is your perception. It mm -hmm. has got a limitation. All your sensory organs have got a limitation. So a very funny joke happened in an interview one day, job interview. You see, uh, the interviewer asked the candidate. It was an interview happening in India for a job. And the interviewer employer asked the candidate, you know, uh, what is further from us is it Delhi or is it the moon and the interview was happening in Bombay in Mumbai okay so the question is what is more further away from us Delhi or the moon so he said Delhi so the interviewer was shocked by his reply you are trying to tell me that Delhi is more far away from us than the moon he said yes we asked him why he said I can see the moon but I cannot see Delhi <laughs> so this is the joke of the sensory organs if your mind relies on the sensory organs to collect data right yep. all these organs have a limitation mm -hmm. eventually when you decide at the intellectual level even the intellect has a limitation imagine how big the universe is you can't no. can you measure it you can't and more importantly it is expanding at a speed faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. So can you measure it? Absolutely not. So this is where we say cosmic intelligence and cosmic wisdom. Once you understand that in context, you understand the entire functioning of the universe in a more holistic manner. Yeah. So we yeah. are not taught to pay in our education system. You see, <clears throat> the fallacy is you don't know who's the I. That's fallacy number one. Yeah. Fallacy yeah. number two is you're only trained for naked ambition. You are not trained for vision. They only give you education to build a healthy career. They don't give you education to build a healthy mind. Mm. And without a all the corruption that you see in the world is a consequence of you being taught the survival techniques, but not being taught a, a, what is a healthy mind. Yeah. yeah. Nepotism is because there is no, uh, uh, the mind is not healthy. The biggest pandemic on the planet is not the COVID-19 pandemic. The biggest pandemic on the planet is the I, me and myself pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the, the reason this pandemic exists and will continue to flourish and grow even bigger is because the system is designed in such a way it supports this growth of this pandemic. They train you for naked ambition. Ambition means more, 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 and more. Vision means all. They don't train you for vision. Mm -hmm. So how can we train people for vision? I'll give you a simple example. Suppose if you bring up a child. <clears throat> now I ask people. Suppose if I tell Richard, okay, let's say. There is a rose flower in front of you, no, Richard. What do you know about the rose flower? Can you tell me a few attributes about the rose flower? Do you want me to? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yes it depends. Well, the, the color of it. Um, color. Okay. Color is color. one attribute. So Perfect. normally we, we most people associate red with rose. Yes. Um, it has fawns on it. Right. Um, it has um, petals on it. Right. Um, it has a green stem. Right. Yeah. The they smell. The smell of the rose. Absolutely. So this is what they typically te teach in the education system. Yeah. What they don't teach is the following, which is vision. Mm -hmm. The entire universe is invested in the rose flower. For the rose flower to happen, air has to happen. Water has to happen. Soil has to happen. Mm -hmm. Without this, the rose flower cannot happen. Yeah. The entire universe is invested in the rose flower. The entire universe is also invested in Richard. Mm -hmm. Without which Richard cannot happen. 
as you are speaking to me you are sitting on the chair and not flying in the air in your studio because gravity has kept you down yeah the universe has invested in you to keep you down mm-hmm. okay yeah. the forces of the universe are working on you every single moment whether you like it or not you can function with ignorance of this knowledge or you can function with absolute awareness of this knowledge what they don't teach you about the rose flower is that you know that particular plant what it exhales we inhale what we inhale it exhales so in that sense half our lungs are hanging outside suppose if i bring up a child with this identity the all inclusive identity saying suppose if i bring up richard telling him it's not a tree it is your lungs half your lungs are there and half your lungs are in your body if i bring you up with this identity forget cutting trees forget destroying nature by the time you would have gone you would have planted at least a thousand trees or one lakh trees before you go yeah you not wreck havoc on the planet mm-hmm. so this kind of education is missing yeah they teach you you know the rose flower is red the rose flower can be blue you can give it to your girlfriend when you go to college all these things they teach <laughs> but they don't teach you these things which i have told you mm-hmm. and this is the most important learning of the rose flower yeah which gives you an all inclusive identity so they train you for naked ambition so what has happened as a consequence of the teaching of the rose flower more people are plucking rose flowers out than letting it live given a why for gifts so in my building you know we have a beautiful garden in my building there's there are some elderly ladies who come and pluck flowers every day one fine day they met me and after that they've stopped plucking flowers now i said you if you love the rose flower they told me they love the rose flower i said why if you truly love the rose flower don't kill it when it when it, when it is in full bloom mm-hmm. the bloom is the youth of the rose flower you are killing it by plucking it out don't kill it let it live its natural life let it shed its petals on its own let it live its life would you appreciate a human being killed at the peak of his youth no why are you killing the rose flower loving it means plucking it loving it means watering it nurturing it letting it grow yeah but because of the way people have been taught about the rose flower more people you'll find them plucking flowers for weddings we are giving flowers for you know if you go to for a date you're carrying flowers funerals to acknowledge mm-hmm. us people carry flowers <laughs> so it's a big joke That's it for today everyone i'm vivek it's been an absolute pleasure Um, I, I actually, I genuinely, um, I'm going to go away with some profound thoughts and things that I probably, things that have never really, really crossed my mind, um, or if they have crossed my mind, not onto the level that we've discussed today. Um, I'd like to think this has touched some people and helped some people as well, like maybe listening or watching. One thing that I'm definitely going to be going away with today is to really focus on this meditation piece. Um, personally, I'm very, very interested in it. I think yes. some of the things that you, that you, I think just the way that you've explained things is in a very simple context. I like some of the stories that you've given us. It's easy to understand. I mean, I can clearly see from your energy and your passion and the way that you've expressed yourself today um, you is uh, is is really incredible. And I can see that you're, like, you can almost tell that somebody's on this kind of different level um, of living almost. I'm um, just with the way that you're coming across of your energy and the way you express yourself. It's quite incredible. And we offer in meditation courses yep. online. Yeah. Uh, please encourage your listeners who want to experience meditation in the truest sense. And as I said, it's not a standard package that's rolled out to everybody left, right, and center. I first understand the individual concerned, and then we roll off a pack a meditation technique that will work for him or her. Yeah. And we also have. mind management modules which take you to the very core of your mind you'll be surprised no richard again there are 84000 thoughts that cross the human mind on an average every day mm-hmm. okay so it's a huge clutter out there yeah we help them sort out this space so i want to end by telling you know that uh, as i mentioned in the example of the rose flower each one of you should remember that more than business management more than wealth management more than you know uh, any other management courses the most important thing is mind management and energy management please do something about it right here right now 
it can transform your life forever yeah any other dimension that you touch any other profession that you touch you will carry a different spark with you once you understood your mind and you understood energy these are the two most important factors that govern human existence on the planet all the chaos that you see in the world is because there is chaos in the mind Mm -hmm. all the havoc that you see around is because there is havoc in the mind the answer to every problem lies in the mind if you sort this space out your life is sorted the world is sorted yeah thank you so much great move thank you very much <laughs>